Hi everyone, I am Suresh, one of the product managers at Syncfusion. I am going to handle today's webinar session. In today's webinar session, we are going to see about the new updates available in 2021 Volume 3 release for the platforms WinUI, MyAI and WPF. Also, we are going to see about developing a sleep tracker application in WinUI. Let's get started. First, we can see about the new updates in WinUI platform. For this release, we have included two new components. One is segmented control and other one is combo box. The date picker, time picker, number box, slider and range slider components are marked as production ready. Both are tree grid and data grid controls comes with numeric and built-in time columns that allows us to edit the uh, time using a time picker and uh, allows us to include only numbers in the numeric column. The scheduler control comes with different calendar types such as Gregorian, Korean, Hebrew and so on. And we also have an option to navigate quickly between different views in the header of the scheduler. Uh, let's see a demo of the new controls and the new features of these controls in uh, WinUI. For demo purpose, I'm going to open pre-installed WinUI uh, application which is readily available in Microsoft stores. So uh, we are navigating to what's new. Uh, since both uh, data grid and tree grid has the same editing uh, features, we are going to see the demo in data grid. In this data grid, the check-in time is configured to the time column and the employee ID is configured as a numeric column. So uh, we are going to uh, choose this cell and uh, move on to this edit mode. Clicking on this icon would open a time picker. So we can choose the time and click on the stick marked to uh, accept the value. Similarly, we are going to edit uh, this numeric cell. This would accept only numeric values and alphabets we enter won't be displayed. Let's move on to scheduler. So the header of the scheduler comes with these options to quickly navigate between different views. So we can easily switch between month to week to day and work week views easily using these options in the header. Like I said, uh, we support different types of calendars which includes uh, Gregorian, Hebrew, Hijri, Korean, Persian and so on. And we can uh, quickly navigate between uh, different types using this uh, combo box. Uh, let's move on to the new control, uh, segmented control. So this provides option uh, for us to choose among the other options displayed in a linear manner. So uh, a lot many customizations are available, not just text, you can include uh, uh, like uh, a text along with an image and uh, you can also customize the way the selected uh, tab should be highlighted like the by customizing the top border style now moving on to combo box control so uh, you can it's a, it's the behavior of a normal combo box you just clicking on it opens a pop up and uh, we can select the item from the pop-up. You can customize the height of the drop-down to display more number of items. So the number of items displayed can be customized. Also the drop-down list items can be customized using custom templates. So different combo box can be dynamically updated based on the value selected in a single combo box. In this case, uh, 
based on the value selected in the first combo box the value of the second combo box is configured and uh, in a similar way the third combo box is configured based on the value selected in the second combo box also the content of the combo box can be customized using the templates to display uh, both text and the uh, image now we shall see the new updates in dotnet my platform this is the first release for the syncfusion to introduce new controls in dotnet my platform so in this uh, release we have introduced new controls such as chart radial gauge and tab view for this initial release we have provided both cartesian and circular chart types and for interaction purpose we have provided tool tips selection zooming and panning features and it uh, the chart also supports data binding you can easily bind our chart control with different data types for this release we have introduced a completely customizable radial gauge which now supports three types of pointers such as needle marker and range and for annotations you can include both text and images in the tab view for the initial release we have provided supported for the nested tab and uh, you can choose between fixed and scrollable tab headers you can add both text and image as uh, the header of the tabs now let's move on to the updates in wpf platform similar to the scheduler in uh, winui wpf platform scheduler is also improved uh, to support different calendar types such as gregorian korean hebrew and so on and also the navigation views the easy mode of navigation between views is provided in the header in the wpf platform as well and for the pdf viewer the you can now lock the annotations in the pdf document which avoids uh, it from editing the annotations now you can zoom a pdf document up to 6400 percentage previously we supported a zoom up to 800 percentage only this feature has been provided to easily view documents such as CAD diagram and construction sites. Let's see a demo for this. I am opening a pre-installed WPF app. This is readily available in Microsoft Store. Link to this app is available in our FT page. For the demo purpose, I am going to include a text annotation in the PDF document. So uh, in the properties of this annotation, I am going to choose this locked option here. So now since it is locked, I cannot move this annotation to any position. This also restricts me from resizing the annotation. Once I remove this lock, I can just move this annotation to anywhere in the PDF document. Also, I can resize this annotation now. There are also few other updates and other controls. You can check them in what's new section of our website. Let's move on to develop a sleep tracker application in WinUI. I'm going to use Visual Studio 2022. So I'm going to open Visual Studio 2022. So I'm going to create a new project. The template of the project is going to be a uh, new way. So I'm choosing this blank app. I am going to name this project as Sleep Tracker. So I am just leaving this target version and minimum version as of.
uh, just to confirm if the machine is configured right for the WinUI projects I'm going to just uh, run this sample just like that So it is uh, working as expected and the application is deployed. Uh, now let's move on to uh, include the NuGet package that is necessary to uh, develop this sleep trap application. I'm going to use a uh, radial gauge to develop this application. So I'm going to include a Syncfusion radial gauge NuGet package to the solution. So uh, moving to this browse tab. I'm going to search for Syncfusion Gauge Win UI. So this is the keyword to locate this. I'm choosing both these projects and choosing to install the latest version. Yes. Now uh, I'm going to open this main page. So I'm going to include the XML namespace to access the radial gauge in this XML page, XAML page. I'm going to uh, name this XML namespace gauge. So uh, this is the namespace to be included. So I'm going to remove this button from here and I'm going to add a grid so this grid is going to have uh, three rows, uh, one primary row to hold the radial gauge and uh, two other rows to display uh, text elements. So I'm going to uh, define the row definition. The height of the first row is going to be a uh, star and the height of the other two rows are going to be auto. After defining the rows, I'm going to include the gauge. I'm going to name this gauge as a sleep tracker. So uh, this radial gauge is going to have one axis and uh, one radial axis and two marker pointers. I'm going to name this radial axis as radial axis as such. Uh, let's run the sample uh, to confirm if the radial gauge is included. Uh, I must to uh, remove this even definition so I'm going to remove it now it should work yes it's working here working as expected uh, for some unknown reasons uh, the heart reload function in this visual studio is not working as expected for me so I have to manually uh, add in the code in the XAML and uh, should uh, redeploy the application uh, time and again to confirm it is if, ref if, ref if it is reflected. 
the complete angle of a radial gauge can be considered as uh, 360 degrees. So this part is considered as 0 and this is 90, this is 180 and this is 270. So that is how our radial gauges are designed. So uh, for our uh, sleep tracker, the start angle and end angle should be kept at the 270 degree. So if it is considered as a radial gauge, the top, the 12 o'clock of the clock has to be the start and the end pointer of end angle of our radial gauge. So I'm going to uh, configure it in that way. So start angle is going to be 270. Similarly, the end angle is going to be 270 degrees. And uh, the minimum value of the gauge is going to be 0 and the maximum value of the gauge is going to be 24. Uh, we are going to set the interval to be 6. So and, uh, and uh, minor ticks per interval is going to be 5. So if the uh, if we run the the sample now, both uh, labels zero and twenty four would be displayed at the top. So uh, we need to avoid the display of a zero at the top. So to do so, we have a property show first label property. We are going to set it to be false, and we are going to assign a fill color for this axis. I'm going to assign it to uh, E1 FI FE. Uh, now we have configured our uh, radial axis. Now let's move on to configure the pointers. So like I said before, it, I, we are going to have uh, two marker pointers. One is a start pointer and another one is an end pointer. I'm going to name this as start pointer. And uh, initial value for this pointer is going to be 20. Considering the time we go to sleep as uh, 10 pm. Uh, it is going to be an interactive pointer. So I am going to assign uh, is interactive property to be true. And uh, we have some uh, built-in uh, types of markers. Let me show you. We have something like circle, diamond, image, rectangle, text, triangle. We can set any type of any these types to uh, our marker pointer. But here we are going to choose it as custom as we are going to uh, design it manually. So I'm choosing it as a uh, custom. We are going to set the marker height and width to be 30 pixels. For the background color, I'm going to choose 2194 F3. I'm using this uh, hexadecimal color code. And for the border, I am going to choose a light gray. Now let's proceed to uh, define the template of this marker pointer. So we are going to redefine the data template. The data template of the marker pointer uh, supports uh, many uh, shapes, custom shapes and you can also use a font icons in, in the place of this data template. Uh, for the start pointer I am going to use a font icon and for the end pointer I am going to use a custom path. Now I am going to include a grid within which I am going to include an ellipse. 
whose height I'm going to uh, bind it to the height of this marker pointer. And for the and for the width, I'm going to bind it to the width of the marker pointer. This copy pasting. Similarly, I'm going to uh, choose for the fill option. I'm going to choose the background of the marker pointer. And for the stroke, I'm going to use the border brush. And thickness of the stroke is going to be one pixel. Uh, followed by I'm going to use a font icon that represents a uh, moon to uh, showcase night. The horizontal and vertical alignment of the font icon is going to be a uh, center. A font it is going to be uh, from the font family Sego. MDL2 assets and font weight is going to be extra bold and the GIF is going to be XEC46 so I'm going to include Amazon Ash XEC 4, 6 followed by a semicolon and font size is going to be 20 and the foreground, foreground is going to be white so we are going to uh, place this icon at the center so uh, we need to set the transform origin to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, x and y value of the transform origin. That is it. Okay, uh, let's run this sample to check if it is working as expected. Uh, so the font icon moon icon is displayed in an inverted manner so we need to transform it uh, to just mirror the icon uh, for that I am going to uh, perform a scale transform in the x-axis of value minus 1 transform I'm going to perform scale transform is one X value with the value minus one uh, this would invert the font icon to get the moon in the expected shape shape that's it uh, we have completed the the start pointer so I'm going to copy and paste it to create an endpoint so I'm copying this code completely and pasting it I'm going to make uh, I'm going to rename this pointer to be in endpoint and the value is going to be uh, 6 a.m. the time we uh, wake up other than that uh, 
Yes, uh -huh, we need to change this part, this segment. The data template need to be customized. So I'm going to remove this uh, font icon part. So I'm in going to include a path. Uh, for the data of the path, I have already uh, copied and saved it in here. So I'm going to use this uh, data. The stretch of the path is going to be uniform. And stroke is going to be white and I'm going to fill the path with the color white. And width and height of the path is going are going to be uh, 18. Now we have successfully designed both the start and the end pointers. Let's move on to uh, uh, defining the range. So uh, after the pointer, I'm going to define the range of the radial axis. We're just going to define one range. I'm going to name this range. The start value of this range is going to be uh, 22. End value is going to be 6. The background is going to be 2194 F3. That is it. Now let's move on to uh, defining the annotations. Uh, like we've seen, uh, we are going to have two different annotations, one in the left and one in the right. The left side is going to uh, denote the sleep time and the right side is going to denote the, the time we wake up. So we are going to have two different annotations. Gauge radial axis annotations and first one we are going to name it as start annotation. The direction unit is going to be angle. Since we are going to uh, place it on the left side, the direction value is going to be 180. If we choose to place it on the right side, the direction angle should be 0. So the position factor is going to be 0 0.4. Now we are going to define the content of the annotation. It is going to be uh, two text blocks. I am going to include a stack panel to align the text blocks. So I am going to include a stack panel. Uh, whose orientation is going to be vertical. So I'm going to include two tech, two different text blocks. So 
So first I am going to denote the date followed by the time. So it is going to be 16th November. The font size is going to be 16. The foreground is going to be uh, 5F B3 F6. 5F B3 F6. The horizontal alignment is going to be center. That's it. Now for the second text block, the text is going to be. Uh, I'm going to name it as sleep time. The text is going to be 22. And the font size is going to be 24. The foreground is going to be the same. 5F RB3 F6. So I'm just going to copy this. That's it. We have uh, designed one annotation. And we are going to design another annotation in a similar fashion. So I'm going to uh, copy this. And paste it here. I'm going to name this as end annotation. Uh, the direction value should be a uh, zero, and uh, the text block label should be wake up time. And text has to be zero six. Now let's include our two text blocks. To display the total time we sleep. We are going to place it in grid row 1. I'm going to name it as slipped time. So the initially the difference is going to be 8 hours. and 0 minutes. The font size is going to be 20. And horizontal alignment is going to be center. So I'm going to include another label with the text sleep time. And its horizontal element is going to be center. Uh, let's run this sample and see how the UI has come. There seems to be some problem in the location of this start pointer. Now you uh, resolve it. Other than that, everything is fine. So now the range value will not be updated because we haven't implemented we hadn't implemented those code changes. We need to do that in the code behind. We need to check the location of the start pointer. So it, I think it displays that 20. It has to be 22. Let's fix this. Yeah, its value is 20. It has to be 22. Now we shall move on to the implementation of updating the UI dynamically. Uh, for that, uh, we are going to uh, implement an event, value changing event of both the start pointer and the end pointer. 
So it's going to be value changing. So it is implemented for the start pointer. I'm going to do the same for the end pointer. Uh, so it is done. We are now going to implement some helper methods that would help us convert the range values into hours and minutes. So since we are going to uh, deal with uh, time here, uh, the based on the values obtained from the start point to an end pointer, the values should be converted to time to display to update the labels. So I'm going to uh, create a method named convert to date and time. It is going to return date time. It is going to accept a date time as one of the input and the value of the pointer as the other input. I'm going to name this uh, parameter day and the other is going to be value. Further, we are going to implement a method named get hours to convert the value into hours. Uh, we are simply going to uh, convert the value into uh, integer. But uh, we are going to uh, round off this double value into uh, integer. That's it. Similarly, uh, we are going to implement a method called get minutes to convert the decimal value of the double into the minutes. It is going to return an integer value. So it is going to accept one of the parameters uh, in the double and other one is going to be um, integer and we are going to provide this har calculated there in here. We are going to return uh, the integer value of the minutes. So uh, convert dot to int 32 math dot floor of value uh, minus the har value multiplied by 60 that's it convert to daytime method we are going to initialize a variable hours to get the hours value. Going to provide the value as the input to this method. And we are going to update this day by adding the value of hours. Yes. It is going to be add hours and not days. And we are going to add the minutes value we calculated using, we are going to calculate using get minutes method.
that's it this would return the uh, day since we display the time in two precisions we are going to uh, develop i mean create a helper class uh, that would uh, return the two precision value if we if the uh, hazard minute value is in single digit so i'm going to uh, name that method as get display string so it is going to accept uh, one value as its parameter and going to uh, return a string value in two precisions to check if it is going to be a single digit or two digit number we are going to divide the provided value by 10 so we are going to create a float variable named digit and I am going to divide value by 10 it's a floating number so I'm providing it as 10 F now I'm going to check uh, if it is a single digit or two digit so I'm going to create a boolean variable is single digit and if, if digit is so greater than or equal to 0 then I'm going to assign the value I mean greater than or equal to 1 then I'm going to assign the value as false if not it is going to be true to return the string if it is going to be uh, if a uh, single digit is it's true then I'm going to append 0 to the value or else I would return the value as such we have almost created all the helper classes now we are going to create a last helper class that would calculate the sleep time so it is going to be of type private it won't return any value so we are going to use this to update the text blocks in the UI Now I'm going to create the start date based on the value of the start pointer. So I'm going to create start date, date of time, date time. So uh, I'm going to use convert to date time method. So year month and day format I'm providing it and I'm providing the val value of the um, start value of the range so the start date uh, will be calculated based on the start value of the range so I'm going to uh, update the sleep time text based on the start value hour and minute Likewise, I'm going to uh, calculate the end date based on the end value of the range and update the wake up time. 
so I'm going to create a date time I'm going to name it as end date this would be uh, based on the end value of the range uh, here it is going to be the next day 2021 11 month and 17 is going to be the day and we are going to provide the end value of the range so I'm going to update the wake up time text block with the with the hour and the end I mean hour and the minute values of the end date both the sleep time and wake up time texts are now updated now we are going to calculate the difference between the uh, wake up time and the sleep time and update the sleep time text so uh, I'm going to create a time span which is going to be a difference of the end date and the start date Now we are going to update the text of the slip time text block. that is it so uh, these methods has to be triggered in both the start value changing uh, event and the end value end pointer value changing event so this dot range dot start value is going to be the new value from this event argument and we are going to call calculate sleep time method here similarly this dot range dot end value is going to be the new value from the event arguments and we are going to call the calculate sleep time here with this we have completed the implementation of the sleep tracker let's now deploy this application and check if everything works as expected The initial view of the sleep tracker looks fine. Uh, let's try moving the start pointer. Yes, it updates the both the uh, I mean value of the range, start value of the range, and the sleep time text block. And uh, moving the end pointer updates the end value of the range and update also updates the wake up time. And the difference is difference the sleep time is calculated as expected yes with this uh, we have successfully developed a sleep tracker application using uh, radial gauge in the UA platform